thank you for joining us in the Global EDU 2021. My name is Elf Majid Antam, Cloud Solution Architect and DevOps Advocate. I have worked for many companies, helping them uh, shape uh, their multiple cloud strategies and also have been involved in many dev communities regarding automation tools, DevOps and CI/CD pipelines and worked with different uh, DevOps and DevSecOps vendors. Also, um, in doing that, I stumbled upon recently the written as a code approach, which for me could be the next wave uh, coming of automation, especially in the cloud industry. In this session, I will be introducing you to the basic concept of this approach and will be answering the 5W's questions. So without any delay, let's jump straight to the content of this session. So I will be covering the big four aspects of making everything as a code in your modern application development. We'll be talking about how and why could you make your architectures already deployed as a library for others to consume or simply by reusing them for more complicated demands that could occur in the future. Then once you have chosen the right architecture, you will need to build it in terms of infrastructure, network, security, identity and access management. So here I will show you how can you do it. Can you do all of this by using what is called infra and network as a code. And finally, how you will be able to maintain and manage the life cycle of your apps by using built-in and custom policies to govern the way that things should be in your environment, even before deploying the target, by using what we call policies and configuration embedded into your repositories as a code. So if you're confused when you read about some software term as a code or everything as a code, all you really need to know is that we are talking about automation. Evidently, in today's world, automation has become the most powerful tool that all developers have to face uh, the upcoming challenges. Everything as a code refers to the idea of managing all aspects of software development, delivery and management by implementing very quickly new architectures, reusing design patterns that are already deployed within an organization or within your client's environments, then by defining and codifying the infrastructure, then by configuring the schema and pipelines used to create, maintain, iterate or expand app development, Automating network and infrastructure provisioning and implementing security best practices within your pipelines as we call it DevSecOps or RAG DevOps in the Microsoft vocabulary. In other words, when you take an everything as a code approach to development and IT, you use policy files to govern the way software is built, deployed, monitored and so on. It's a bit of a metaphor extension applying the application development approach to other components of IT including DevOps to ensure that best practices get defined and followed with a minimum of effort. The Everything as a Code approach also offers the benefit of reducing the risk of human error. When all of your workflows are defined as a code, you no longer have to worry about uh, an engineer forgetting to do something or clicking the wrong button by mistake. Everything as a Code makes also auditing easier because you can use your Everything as a Code configurations to determine what was done to your systems. Technology always should be business enabler first, which means you will need to control every aspect of the cloud infrastructure hosting your business. For example, when you have a new business in demand with specific security guidelines or new compliance roles, you should be able to migrate and be compliant with a minimum of effort. So basically, architecture as a code is all about patterns. The patterns automate the creation and lifecycle management of an application's topology. For example, a highly available web application would contain the automation scripts needed to create a cluster web tier, a cluster app server tier, and a cluster database tier, plus the network configuration necessary to connect those tiers together. A centralized function or even a dedicated person for enterprise architecture can create a pattern library that contains iterative, hardened, tuned application topologies that are secured by design. With that pattern library, operations no, lo no longer needs to manually create the dev, tests, and production topologies for web apps, mobile apps, and so on. Application developers select the type of the pattern needed, including the desired quality of service, 
specifying, for example, the high availability criteria, load balancing features, redirection of traffic, and provide the final configuration needed. And that should be it. This take this simple architecture where we have the following assets. A web application that could be, for example, under ISP.NET or instead on an Azure App Service plan. There will be an Azure SQL Server database that will be consumed from the web app, a blob storage for handling all auditing logs and vulnerability assessments, maybe an Azure DNS to resolve the web app. This could be a start for your architecture as a code library, as this simple schema can be repeated again and again for many clients out there. Another example would be applications that are running on simple virtual machines with web server roles and external cloud-based databases. The thing actually with architecture as a code approach is that your application developers no longer need to care about the underlying plan bend, means they don't have to worry about whether the app is running in a container, a cluster, a private cluster, or a virtual machine. Instead, developers focus more on shipping code that drives the business value rather than dealing with the network and infrastructure issues. So what to keep in mind when you need or have to use architecture as a code is those three principles. The first one, keep it simple and don't repeat yourself so you can learn from your mistakes. This way you will be able to quickly adapt your architectures with new and on-demand needs. Here it comes the second principle of making business application owners drive themselves without writing any code, only by few clicks to choose the pattern and the start the deployment. The third principle implies decoupling the application from the plumbing details. IT operations has the flexibility to optimize workloads with little fear of breaking applications, which eliminates the fire drills. So basically, uh, there is a huge cost benefit as well. A large chunk of the IT cost for creating an enterprise application comes from building the underlying plan bin with patterns that cost is freed up and can be redirected to focus on higher value work. One of the best tooling available outside there, which I personally used, is Brainboard.co. This is a SaaS offering that integrates with mini cloud providers offers an easy to use platform to visually build and manage cloud infrastructures and outputs for you pre-packaged Terraform templates that, could, that you could directly use and integrate in your projects. You can use it for free as a starter. This is a very, very useful tool. Now let's jump to the second part of this session. As you already probably all know, infrastructure as a code is the name given to the techniques used to describe and provision the compute, storage, network, and other resources as part of the deployment of the modern applications in cloud platform. With infrastructure as a code, developers embed the infrastructure requirements for the application right alongside the application code in the resource control repositories. These requirements are provided in data formats that can be easily processed by an infrastructure deployment tool most cases where infrastructure as a code is used today is within cloud environments where infrastructure requirements for application were developed along with the application that were built for the cloud or migrated to the cloud. It is actually much rarer to see true infrastructure as a code leverage for legacy systems, traditional data centers, etc. But personally, I believe we are headed in that direction. In this session, as we are time shorted, I will not be uh, deep diving into this, rather than just try to give you an overview of the whole life cycle of the everything as a code approach. And here it comes the uh, network as a code in the other side. Network as a code is the application of the infrastructure as a code concepts to the full network domain. The successful implementation of network as a code is part of the wider uh, strategy, which is called Net DevOps adoption within an enterprise. So it will involve significant changes in the way we think about network design and operations, the culture around network change, and of course, the tooling and technology used to build and manage configurations. So I propose uh, three principles for network as a code within the net DevOps uh, culture. The principle number one would be source control management. 
If we are going to have a network as a code strategy, we need to treat the network configuration as a code, and the code is stored in source control, which basically means that these repositories will include collaboration features such as issue login, release tracking, basically all the Git and Agile features. This means that successful net DevOps teams can leverage code, reviews, issue logs, pull requests, etc. In the same way, successful software development teams uh, do this. The second principle is that you should treat your source control as a single source of truth for how your network should be configured. Manual configurations by network engineers is a deviation and a mistake in a network as a code world. Part of the reason behind infrastructure as a code principle within cloud uh, application is the ability to quickly and efficiently stand up fresh instances of the infrastructure needed for an application within different environments. And the final principle of the network as a code relates to how the configuration from source control are actually applied to the network devices themselves. The actual implementation of the code must be done through programmatic APIs. This is actually the very nature of uh, managing your infrastructure as a code it implies that network setup and modifications will be applied programmatically. This is typically done with, with the help of uh, some IT automation platforms such as Ansible, for example. So now let's jump into the tooling part. There are many choices available out there to do infra as a code, but each of them have or must have limitations related to some cloud provider or features. For the Microsoft Azure Cloud Platform, we have two ways that are built in with Azure DevOps and CLIs, which are ARM templates, which are basically some JSON files easy to deploy, but difficult to manage and read and also to recycle. And uh, for this purpose, Microsoft introduced the what we call the Azure BSEP, which is the next generation of ARM templates. This is a project initiated by Microsoft engineering teams. So basically, BSEP is a domain-specific language for uh, deploying Azure resources declaratively. And there is another enthusiastic but good open source project for automating Azure deployments, which is Farmer, based on the F-Sharp language, same principle as Azure uh, BSEP. For AWS, similar to ARM templates, we are talking about CloudFormation, which offers powerful features to automate and manage AWS deployments of infrastructure and third-party apps. For the rest of the tools that support many cloud providers, including the big three, Azure, AWS, and Google, we have Terraform by HashiCorp, which allows you to safely provision and manage multi-cloud infrastructure at any scale. We have also Ansible, which I could be, which I could describe as the best in the market to automate tasks and deployments. We have also Crossplane. Uh, this is an open source uh, Kubernetes add-on that enables platform teams to assemble infrastructure from multiple vendors and expose higher level self-service APIs for application teams to consume without having to write any code. Each of these tools presents advantages and inconvenience, and every client enterprise has its own compliance rules, context, security guidelines that would restrict the usage of one or many of those tools available today. Now that you have designed, deployed your applications, infrastructure, and network, you will need to maintain it. So how can you do this? Here it comes the policy and configuration as a code. So the policy and configuration as a code is the process of automating the verification, readiness, performance, and accuracy of an application by using policies that are already automated and one click to activate. This allows us to make guarantees to consumers and users of a certain product, uh, which could be as simply um, a web server hosted on a virtual machine exposed through uh, for example, uh, uh, NVA, uh, Network Virtual Appliance System. This helps to ensure that all changes are in a compliance and adhere to a set of standards. In general, there are two ways of making a decision in the IT field. Either the team can manually decide if a decision is correct or automating the decision-making process. Of course, the second one scales better than the first one. So treating policy as a code allows you for automated allows uh, for automated decision making, giving developers and engineers the independence to manage feature defining work without sacrificing compliance. Let me give you some example of real life use cases which include policies. 
For example, when we talk about authorization control for application services or uh, what we call in the EJR uh, role-based access control to resources deployed within your environments, this is one of the most common use cases for policies as a code. To check authorization, a service makes an API call to the policy engine to output whether the request is authorized or not. This is cool, right? Second example would be, for example, enforcing specific requirements on cloud resources, such as mandatory tags for uh, some instances, which could be uh, billing tags, security tags, etc. Also, firewall and networking settings and provisioned machine or instance types. This is a perfect use case for both EJR policies and also using HashiCorp's policy engine uh, Sentinel. Uh, another example would be the Kubernetes control. You can manage Kubernetes by writing policies against different Kubernetes resources like pods, namespaces, nodes. You can also ensure that container images come only from trusted registries, etc. etc. In order to make all decisions make it automated as much as possible. There is a very enthusiastic open source project that is called OPA that gives you a high level declarative language to alter and enforce policies across your stack. OPA is hosted by the Cloud Native Computing Foundation as a graduated project. Uh, this is a very, very, very interesting uh, project uh, that I have, I have personally used and used uh, many times. So I recommend you looking at open policy agent GitHub public repository, for example, if you are interested in trying the OPA policies. So now let's jump into the tooling part. Each of these tools presents advantages and inconvenience, and every client enterprise has its own compliance rules, security guidelines, etc. That would restrict the usage of one or many of the tools available today. For example, EJR policies could be a sort of a cloud foundation for some companies, especially that EJR policies offers the possibility to create custom policies based on aliases that Microsoft provides for nearly all services they offer on EJR, which basically means that you can audit everything that is hosted on EJR. Even better, you can integrate this directly into your infra as a code using EJR DevOps pipelines. If you'd like also to try OPA policies with uh, another great tool, which is called Harness, as part of your CI/CD pipelines, Harness offers a great way to achieve this. And uh, as a bonus, I would like to introduce to you, for those of you who are using a lot of IAM templates today, the Secure DevOps Kit for EJU. AZSK was created by the Core Services Engineering and Operations Division at Microsoft to help accelerate Microsoft IT adoptions of EJR. AZSK is not an official Microsoft product rather than an attempt to share Microsoft best practices with the community. Uh, this is a very interesting tool that could be used as an extension from the EJR DevOps uh, platform. It has been shared with the community to provide the guidance for rapidly scanning, deploying, and uh, operating cloud resources across the different stages of DevOps while maintaining controls on security and governance. This is a very useful tool, especially when you want to delegate your deployments to third parties and you want to make sure that the code they are using is secured. So basically, the IZSK is uh, giving you control uh, to the infra as a code, network as a code, everything as a code that you have put in your repositories, uh, scanning them before deploying them. Thank you. That's it. I hope this session I helped you guys to get the to get to know more on the everything as a code approach, and uh, you could leverage a whole new culture of automating everything inside your teams. Remember, automation is the new standard in today's world. Thank you, and have a great day.